2010, there are countless different spiritual organizations. We all know that. There are countless different teachers. We all know this too. And there are countless different <coughs> spiritual paths. And because of the enormity of what's available, we are often overwhelmed by what's available. Which scripture do I study? Which teacher do I follow? Which organization is true, which one is not true? What religion am I? There's so much opportunity out there, so much available out there, we are often overwhelmed by all of this. And so it's our responsibility to find out what a religion is about, what a scripture is about, what a path is about, what a teacher is about. And now you're all smiling because I keep saying about, right? This is your <laughs> These, all of these, we need to at least have an over, overview of <laughs> so that we know which direction to go in. We need to develop that overview. And that's what we're seeking to do through Upadesh Sai. Yesterday we studied Bhakti Yoga. Very thoroughly we studied Puja, Japa, Contemplation. We have more to talk about contemplation. Right now you're all studying Karma Yoga. Swamiji took two discourses, there's still two more discourses to go. Today we will study Ashtanga Yoga. Karma Yoga is being studied, Bhakti Yoga was studied. Now we enter into Ashtanga Yoga. Ashtanga Yoga. So the question is, what are the salient features of this Ashtanga Yoga? In Karma Yoga, the word yoga means to unite. Yukta, to join. What is it that we're joining? What is it that we're uniting? Are we uniting people? Are we uniting limbs? It's uniting the lower self with the higher self. Uniting that ego with Brahman. In other words, it's bettering oneself. That's why it said this is self-development. This is a self-development course. One of the chicks in here is doing the Dale Carnegie course. And he was mentioning to me afterwards that what he's learning here and what he learns in Dale Carnegie, they overlap with each other. And I said, the difference is that you paid $250 here, and there you paid $2,000, and here you get everything. And there, it's much lesser than what's being given here. What are we uniting? In Karma Yoga, we use our actions to better ourselves. The way we act to lift ourselves. In Bhakti Yoga, we use our heart to lift ourselves. Jnana Yoga we still have to study in the coming days, so I won't elaborate on that too much. In Jnana Yoga, we use the mind to lift ourselves. But with Ashtanga Yoga, we use the body to lift ourselves. This Ashtanga Yoga is based on Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Karma Yoga is primarily taught in Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Whenever we think Karma Yoga, we think of Lord Krishna talking to Prince Arjuna. Bhakti Yoga, we also think about Srimad Bhagavad Gita, but we also think about Narada Bhakti Sutras or Manasa Bhakti Sutras. They're the devotional literature. When it comes to Ashtanga Yoga, our mind should go to Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Now this word Ashtanga, I explained yoga means to join. What does Ashtanga mean? It means Ashta, Anga. Ashta means eight. Anga means limbs. So this yoga has eight limbs. It's an octopus. I had to say it. <laughs> I'm finding slowly, it's sad and not so sad too, that the more time I spend with adults, a lot of those Indian old adult jokes come out. You know the ones that we don't laugh at, we just go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> But I catch myself saying those more and more often. 
Anyways, so this eight limbs, this is what this yoga is based on. And I'm going to give you a lot of terms and what they mean. So if you want to write these, great. If you don't, you don't have to, obviously. But it's worth knowing. So, write it. <laughs> the first limb is called yama. Y-A-M-A. And what this yama means in English is restraints. The first limb of these Patanjali Yoga Sutras is yama. Restraints. And I'll, wait, I'll talk about all of them and then it'll make more sense. The second is called niyama. N-I-Y-A-M-A. -A. And this means discipline. The first was restraints, the second is disciplines. The third is asana, A-S-A-N-A, -A -A, which means postures. The fourth is pranayama. A lot of these terms I'm sure we've heard of. Has anyone not heard of yama before? Yama is a new word to anyone here? Niyama, asana, pranayama. Pranayama means breathing. I'm giving very basic definitions. Number five, Pratyahara. Pratyahara is the fifth limb of this Ashtanga Yoga, and this means sense control. There's another word for sense control which we studied last year. It starts with a D. Dhamma. Very good. Dhamma. Number six is dharana. Dharana means concentration. So restraints, disciplines, postures, breathing, sense control, concentration. The seventh is dhyana. Dhyana means meditation. As you write these notes, I know a lot of these Sanskrit terms we cannot spell or get right away, so just make a note of it and then ask me afterwards and I'll try to convey to you what these terms mean more elaborately. And the last of these Ashtanga Yoga, the last limb is Samadhi. And Samadhi means enlightenment. These are the eight limbs or the eight guidelines to practice Ashtanga Yoga. Now I want to focus on Yama and Yama specifically because it's something that we can truly practice here and now and as I elaborate on these, it'll make a lot of sense. So, Yama is in five parts. The first Yama is Ahimsa. Yama is five parts, Niyama is five parts. The first Yama is Ahimsa. Ahimsa means Uncontrolled violence. Violence is only when it's uncontrolled. Like when a boxer hits another boxer. That's not violence, because if it's violence, then the police would be there. When there's a lack of control, then it becomes violent. If I have gangrene in my left finger and I cut it off, is that violence? Because we often confuse ahimsa with not physically hurting or affecting. But it's required of it. I need to cut my finger off if there's gangrene in it. If it's going to poison the rest of my hand, I need to incur that. Just like the difference between lust and attraction. Without attraction, all species dissolve. The fact that males and females are attracted to each other allows our species to continue. Lust is when that is out of control. In the same way, Ahimsa is uncontrolled. There's a lack of purpose, a lack of discipline to that physical engagement. Then, the second of the Yamas is Satya. Satya. It's not just about speaking the truth. It's about thinking the truth. We have approximately 60,000 thoughts a day. Approximately. I doubt we use 60,000 words a day. I doubt. We think way more than when we speak. So just because I'm truthful in my speech, but I'm lying in my head, 
That's dangerous, not only to me, but to everyone around. Truth has to happen in here. And if there's truth in here, what will come out here? The tendency for me to speak truthful is much more to them. So that truth has to be in here. I need to see it like it is. And that's why I brought up gossiping yesterday. Gossiping is a form of lying. Telling it like it's not. But we should tell it like it is.